Okay, so let's take a look at question number three here. So three is, um, it's a little bit, just a touch more complicated. Okay, but again, our first thing here is we wanna write this in standard form. So our parabola here in standard form is going to be y is equal to negative four x minus zero, okay, plus six. So in our other questions, the, the value of k, which is related to that part of for the vertex k was always zero. In this case here, it's, it's six. So we need to look at, first of all, compression or expansion. Okay, so compression, okay, or expansion. Okay, so again, we know our value here of a, okay, is actually, um, it's, uh, it's a negative value, but it's, it's, it's also four. So it's, it's in a sense here, the four, um, it's greater than one. Okay, if it was a neg if it was a positive four, like the correct way to look at this is the absolute value. Okay, the absolute value of, of the number negative four is just the size of the number is four. Okay, and then that's greater than one. So this means that we're going to get a, a vertical stretching or an expansion of the curve. Okay, but we also know that it's going to open downward because it's a negative value in front of the, the A. Okay, our vertex is simply going to be the coordinates for the h and the k values. So the h value here is zero. Okay, and remember the form of the equation is plus k, so it's six. So that means our vertex is at zero, six. So right away, we could look at zero on the x and then um, six on the y. Okay, and we know it's going to open downwards. So this is going to be the highest point. Okay, and then if we look at our x and y intercepts, okay, again, we need to kind of sketch the curve to, to kind of see where this is going to work. So we can just do an x and a y table here. Okay, and we'll put in um, zero for x. Okay, and then that will give us a y of six. And then let's just try, um, we'll put in one and negative one, and let's just see how, how big these numbers get. So four t one squared is four, four times, sorry, one squared is one, times negative four is negative four, plus six is going to be two. Um, one squared, negative one squared is one, times four is negative four, so this is going to be two. So let's just put those three points down. So zero, six, and then I have one and two here and then negative one and negative two here. Okay, so you can see that this, if this parabola is opening downward, okay, it's actually going to now actually have an x-intercept because it's going to end up crossing the x-axis, okay, at some point, okay, it looks like it's between, um, you'd have to draw that maybe a little more accurately or you'd have to work out the calculation for that, but it is going to cross the x-axis here at some point, all right? So how would we do that if we want to um, figure that out exactly? Okay, how do, would we know what our x-intercepts are? So our x-intercepts are when y is equal to zero. Okay, so we can look at this on the curve here. So the x-intercept happens, okay, when y is equal to zero. All right, so we can just kind of solve for that. Okay, so if y is equal to zero, we can say zero is equal to negative four x squared plus six. All right, and then um, we need to uh, solve for x. So we can have here subtract six on both sides is equal to negative four x squared and then divide by negative four. Okay, remember we can't take the square root of a negative, but that's not what this is going to produce. This is going to give us x squared is equal to um, uh, negative six over negative four, which is six over four, which is reducing to three halves. So x is equal to the square root plus or minus the square root of three over two. Okay, so we'd have to work that on in a calculator, but that is going to give us our x coordinates for where that intercept is. Okay, and is there a y-intercept on this here? Where a y-intercept is just where x is equal to zero. So when x is equal to zero, okay, we see that the y-intercept is just equal to our vertex point here. So our y-intercept 
okay, is when x is equal to 0. Okay, and when we plug that in here, we would get y is equal to negative 4 times 0 squared plus 6, which is equal to 6. So that would be our y-intercept. Okay, and then just likewise here, we'll just finish the question off here, the domain and range. So the domain is, again, all your x values here. So x is an element of all real numbers. It can be positive or negative. There's no, no difference there. Um, it, it's going to take all the numbers along the x axis. Okay, and then the range does have a restriction. Okay, it has to be all numbers less than or equal to 6 because it's opening downwards. Okay, so that would be a way that we could look at how to do this question uh, manually. And again, if you want to verify it to be a little bit more exact, uh, we can just plug that into the graphing tool in Desmos.